Well, with chapter 30 today of the book of Ezekiel, this is a, a continuation of talking about ancient Egypt and the prophecies against them uh, as they have attempted to help uh, Jerusalem, but uh, it's not going to work out. Now, verse 1, the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, How will ye woe worth the day, or alas for the day? You know, be, this is, uh, be alert. Verse 3, For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia. When the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Ethiopia, and Libya, and Lydia, and all the mingled people, and Chub, and the men of the land that is in league, shall fall with them by the sword. Thus saith the Lord, They also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down from the tower of Syene, Shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. Now, a lot of this, you, if you think about this, this is so Egypt. If you think of, of uh, northern Africa, Egypt is kind of the northeast corner of Africa. And then below it is Ethiopia. This is where Nubians, uh, the Nubian kingdom and things were as well. Uh, a lot of times they were enemies with Ethiopia, but to, sometimes they would they would be connected or work together as well. So they're saying that Egypt and those who help Egypt are going to be destroyed. Uh, from the Tower of Syene, which is, if I remember right, that is towards the, that is in the southern kingdom, southern Egypt, and further south basically from there. Uh, so verse 7, And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her city shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I have set a fire in Egypt, when all her helpers shall be destroyed. In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid, and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So Babylon is going to be coming into Egypt and uh, destroying them, basically. Uh, verse 11, He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked, and I will make the land waste. All that is therein by the hand of strangers, I, the Lord, have spoken it. So the there's resources of the area are going to be gone, basically. They're going to have a lot of, uh, there's not going to be much there when when all this is done. So Nebuchadnezzar is going to come do a lot of destruction in Egypt, and then other groups are going to take some of the resources out as well. Uh, and if you think about it, even from an environmental standpoint, there's a lot of desert out there. I mean, there's a lot of lands that just, there's not much. So at some point, a lot of that was decent land, and now it's not as much anymore, basically. Uh, now, verse 13, Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause their images to cease out of Noth. Now, Noth is Memphis. Now, you might say, Memphis, isn't that in Tennessee? Yeah, there is a Memphis, Tennessee, where Graceland is uh, the the um, capital of Elvis Presley. You know, that's where he, he had his his home. South Memphis, uh, but Memphis is an ancient town, one of the ancient kingdoms, ancient um, capital cities, basically, of southern Egypt. So northern Egypt and southern Egypt used to be two kingdoms, and then they unified as one big kingdom, uh, and they kind of had their two capitals. Uh, so Memphis is one of the, is the southern capital, an ancient southern capital. There shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt, and I will put fear in the land of Egypt. And I will take, and I will make Pathros desolate. So this is southern Egypt. And I will set fire to Zon, uh, which is actually the town of Ramses, and will execute judgments in No, which is uh, Heliopolis. So if you're familiar with your Egyptian geography, you'll know where some of these towns are. Uh, they've changed names over the years. 
basically. Um, Heliopolis is the religious center uh, of Egypt for a while there. Um, uh, Thebes is a, is was after them, if I remember right. Verse 15, I will pour my fury upon sin, the strength of Egypt, and will cut off the multitude of no. So again, Heliopolis. And I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain. No shall be rent asunder. And Noph shall have distresses daily. So these are all southern kingdom areas in Egypt that are happened. So remember, Egypt is flat in the north and mountainous in the south. So this is the higher elevation area of Egypt. Uh, verse 17, the young men of Avon and P. Beseth shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. And as best as I found of these, this is um, Avon is is another name for Heliopolis, and P. Beseth also is another name for Bubastis, about forty miles north of Memphis. So these are a bunch of different cities in southern Egypt. Uh, at Tehaphanes also the day shall be darkened. This is verse 18, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughter shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word Lord came unto me, saying, so here's another revelation. There's a lot of continuous revelation going on with Ezekiel. Verse 21, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong, to hold the sword. So basically, this is a this is a kind of a confirmation revelation given to Ezekiel that says, hey, just so you know, Egypt has been destroyed. Egypt's been taken out, basically. Uh, Egypt as a country comes back, like, like we said in the last chapter, after 40 years. A lot of Egyptians come back, they restart the country, start doing more with it, uh, but they never... They're never the same, just never the same, basically. So this is saying, basically, Egypt's going to be injured and not heal from it. Verse 22, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, the strong and that which was broken. I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall stretch out, stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and disperse them among co the countries, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So... Babylon is going to do the Lord's work in scattering these nations, uh, completely disrupting these areas, uh, which will help in reforming these places, basically. Uh, and so we'll see Egyptians come back after about 40 years. Jude Judaism will, uh, you know, the tribes of Judah, those who've been in exile, will come back after 70 years and uh, resettle. And then there's, of course, the latter days, big gathering, spiritual gathering, and well as physical gathering of Israel also. So there's more to this gathering and scattering than you thought probably after you really get looking at these chapters here. But some interesting points for us to look at as these prophecies go. Um, and then let's jump over to our next chapter of Ezekiel as we continue these prophecies that Ezekiel is getting from God.